My producer handed me the sheet of all your titles. You have this, founder and CEO of Mobius AI Investments. You're now also an advisor to Hong Kong-based asset management manager, Chartwell Capital. Mark, let's start off with that. Tell us about this new gig. Well, Chartwell, as you know, is a really leading manager in Asia, and particularly in Hong Kong and China. They've been doing a terrific job, and I think they're going to see some good opportunities now because... The Hong Kong market, as you can see, has been driven down to very, very low levels. Of course, it could go lower, but we're now beginning to see people make comparisons with India and China and Hong Kong, of course, and begin to think, hey, maybe India has gone too far up and there's an opportunity for Hong Kong and China side stocks to perform. Um, I'm not predicting that, but I think people are beginning to look at the valuations I begin to think that perhaps there's going to be a good opportunity there. Well, what 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 meets your criteria, Mark? Because you tend to have a very stringent, of course, uh, netting out process and figuring out which what's what's value. I, I'm wondering, does anything meet your criteria at this point in Hong Kong? And also, what what criteria do you use? Price to earnings or something else? Uh, we use uh, return on assets, return on capital, uh, to begin with. They're mm -hmm. very important. We look at, uh, of course, the EPS growth rate, and we look at debt. We like companies with the low debt. I would say those are the three big things we are focusing on. Of course, we look at hundreds of other variables, but those are the three that we are really focusing on. And now some of these stocks in China and Hong Kong are beginning to meet some of those criteria. Right. Yet that's that's it's not been enough to attract, you know, the large you would know, Mark, the large foreign institutional investors that have largely kept their distance from this market. And despite everything that tells us this market is cheap on valuations and it might rally on the policy pronouncements and stimulus, it, it doesn't seem to move the needle. And I'm wondering you've watched this market for a long time, Mark. I'm wondering where there's whether you think there's also a messaging issue here on the part of Chinese officials to global markets? Oh, there's no question that the Chinese officials are trying their best to uh, regain confidence, get, get people to be confident again. But you must remember, at the end of the day, it's the Chinese investors who drive the Chinese market, not foreign investors. So the first uh, order of business will be for them to uh, instill confidence in the in Chinese investors' minds. Uh, but I think that will eventually come once this housing problem is over. It will take some time. But as you know, most Chinese uh, investors have a lot of money in their property, more than in stocks. So if their property, the property situation gets better, then I think you'll see money from the Chinese investors going into the market. And I think uh, Chartwell would probably be able to take advantage of that uh, since they're sitting there in Hong Kong and watching developments. Yeah, active, of course, and yeah, very close to the action. Mark, so tell me this then. So you hit the nail on the head. You have two issues which will likely be with us in some form over the next year or years. Property market and, of course, with the lack of inflation in this market. What do you think amidst those two things that will remain a feature of these markets, what do you think the appropriate investment strategy or exposure would be to China given those two things? I think the appropriate strategy would be, first of all, keep an eye on U.S. interest rates uh, because as mm. risk, and they're coming down. They're going to be coming down. The Fed has already said they will. Uh, and that will be positive for emerging markets generally and for China as well because one of the problems is the higher interest rates that uh, the Chinese property investors have to face. So I think that's something we have to look at at the end of the day. And we will probably see that happening probably by the end of this year, beginning of next year. Mark, uh, just want to get your thoughts and make the case for EMs. Uh, U.S. markets continue to outperform. And I'm wondering what the case would be uh, to do the opposite, Mark, given just everything that's been happening in the U.S. can't seem to find, I mean, that rally can't stop, that market can't stop rallying. Uh, that's true. The U.S. market has been terrific. And, uh, of course, U.S. fixed income has been great. Uh, you know, at 5 percent, uh, foreign <laughs> investors find it very little to be in their own market. But as I said, when markets uh, perform is when the interest rates come down. And I think that's going to happen. And emerging markets will be the first to benefit. 
But you must remember now that uh, emerging markets are, are very different. And if you look at uh, the Indian market, uh, the Indian market has outperformed the U.S. market. And of course, it's outperformed right. the MCI, Emerging Markets Index. So there are a lot of things happening. I'm here in Brazil, uh, very interesting developments in terms of uh, lots of infrastructure. Of course, oil, they're drilling oil and pumping oil at an increasing rate. And then I'm headed for Argentina. And as you know, Argentina uh, in the dollarization program is in selling a tremendous amount of confidence. So you may see these markets begin to perform again. Okay, well, I was going to ask you, does it make sense, Mark, and I probably know the answer based on what you just said, does it make sense at all to buy an EM index or is it nonsense? Uh, I wouldn't buy the EM index. I would uh, look at individual okay. markets and, and do it that way. Uh, of course, you know, the EM index has underperformed so badly uh, and it's because of China. Once China begins to perform, then you'll see that happening. You may want to buy uh, an index X China for the time being, but again, you have to be careful because China may pick up and then you lose that opportunity. But I pick individual stocks to begin with. Right. Uh, you mentioned India. Just a question on that, if, if you will. Uh, yeah, elections are this year, and do you think that bull market continues agnostic of, of, of who's in charge of India? Yeah, I think you, 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 that's the word, agnostic. You've got to really look at the individual stocks, individual sectors. And, of course, technology is the big, big winner right now and will continue to be going forward. Okay. Uh, talk to what you, so you mentioned you're in Brazil, some interesting things there in the energy sector. Um, what's, 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 what's peaking your interest in Brazil at this point, Mark? Uh, right now, uh, believe it or not, even though the oil is flowing very nicely in these deep wells off the coast of Brazil, uh, we are interested in technology, uh, software companies, companies that are using technology in one way or the other. It's really amazing to see how even the central bank here in Brazil has created a digital uh, payment system. And that means that they're really on top of the technology spectrum. And that's going to be very exciting going forward.